Today we're going to be talking about a vehicle you guys have seen here on the channel, but it probably doesn't get as much time on here as it really deserves. already know I bought a 2020 Land Rover Defender a few months back and of course I bought it all bone stock and we've made some modifications. Now to cover some of the things we have changed as you can tell it definitely has a much bigger set of tires. Those are true 35 1250s on the stock 20 inch rims. Aside from that I've got some 30 millimeter spacers to poke it out just a little bit more to give us some extra clearance. Now this is not stock rod height, it's actually a two inch lift using lift rods. So with those two inch lift rods, it gives us just enough clearance to be able to clear these big old tires in the front, but not without a lot of trimming. So as you can tell, we've trimmed a lot in the front section, of course, a lot in the back section of the front inner fender wheel liner. And also I did the intercooler relocation kit and had to trim the inner fender wheel liner quite a bit as well. Now with all that, it clears pretty darn good, but there are still a couple situations that I've had where it does rub ever the slightest, but it still rubs just a little bit. You even have to trim down on the actual covers down there. Land Rovers put a lot of sound deadening all over the vehicle, so some of that extra stuff needs to be trimmed off as well. But for the most part, it's pretty impressive that you can clear these 35 1250s on just a two inch lift rod kit that's pretty inexpensive. Aside from that, I do have the spare relocation kit just to get a better angle because before the tire was basically rubbing right on the rear bumper and touching to where the rear wiper arm didn't have enough room to move. And with that from Saltec Motors, which they're the ones that sent out pretty much everything to make this build possible, it really brings the look together and I really, really like it. So going beyond that, there's really not that much to cover in terms of the accessories that we've done aside from the exhaust. Now doing a simple muffler delete on this has made a world of difference because this does have the 3.0 liter turbocharged, supercharged, and mild hybrid power plant. So it puts out quite a bit of horsepower and torque. It definitely gets out of its own way. It can tow up to almost 8,000 pounds, but it has one of the most complicated ways to set up a hitch I've ever seen in my entire life. So I haven't even added a hitch to this one and it did not come with it from the factory. Now, while we are on the outside, let's go ahead and cover everything I absolutely love about the outside of this vehicle. First and foremost, I love the boxy design of the Land Rover Defender. It gives it a rough and rugged look, even stock from the factory. And I really appreciate that coming from Jeeps. Obviously, I love boxy vehicles anyway, so I'm glad to see it on something like this. Aside from that, I love the accents all the way around to make it look like a true off-road machine, just like the black pieces on the hood, as well as the fender vents on the sides, and even the way the front bumper is designed. It still gives you pretty good approach and departure angles the way it's set up. Obviously, there are some aftermarket solutions that make it way, way better, but it's really cool. You'll see a camera right there in the front, and it's got cameras all the way around, 360s to the side. It has some of the coolest camera systems I've ever seen, and it makes it really easy to use off-road and on-road if you're just at the mall parking lot. I really love how they have Defender written out on the hood right there. It looks really good and it brings you back to the Defenders they used to make in days past. Now, whenever you look a little higher on the Defender, you'll see the Safari window on the top right below the roof rail. And I've always thought that, that is really, really cool. Now from this angle right here, I don't think there are many vehicles on the road that look better. I love the straight edges, the way that the tire sticks out. You still get to see the exhaust and the way the fenders pop so good at this angle. It's extremely hard to beat and I really love this design. Now while we're out here, I'm also gonna show you guys something really cool about this air rod suspension. Of course, it does have the two inch lift rods, but you still have plenty of flexibility in terms of your ride height. So I'm gonna lower it down and raise it up so you guys can see the differences in ride height. So this is standard ride height. This is access ride height, which is obviously quite a bit lower. You can tell just how tucked these tires get whenever it's on access ride height. The rear right here is completely tucked in. It looks really cool whenever it's sitting there. Obviously, you can't really drive very far like that, but man, does it look good. And we have 
just a bit of articulation the way we are right now. Then the front up here is lowered all the way down to where the tire is almost touching the fenders. And this is off-road ride hop. So as you can tell, it lifts it up quite a bit. Even with the two inch lift rods, it lifts it up a lot and it gives you quite a bit more clearance. Now with that being said, whenever you are using this, the suspension is a lot rougher. It's a lot tighter and it doesn't have near as much flex simply because you have those airbags pumped up to pretty much the max PSI. But if you are parking next to a Jeep or parking next to anything you wanna be a little taller than, this definitely helps. And from this angle right here, it really paints the picture of how much of a difference it makes. Now moving on to the inside, I've honestly gotta say, the interior is second to none compared to anything else I've ever had. I've had a lot of really cool vehicles. You've got every kind of feature that you'd really want. Of course, you've got memory seats. We've got the Meridian sound system. We've got a full LCD display. We've got an awesome screen with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, heated seats, dual zone climate, and a massive panoramic roof. And then you can see the Safari windows right there. It's got so many cool features that are really nice but it's also laid out extremely well. I love the way that the doors still show you some of the actual door, a lot like the Jeep Wranglers do. Even down to the way the dash is laid out, I love the design of the interior. I've really, really enjoyed it so far, and I don't have one single issue with how anything's laid out or what features it does have, other than this specific one not having adaptive cruise control, but it's not a big deal. Down here, you have your selections for your off-road ride height. You have your low, so you can put it in low gear. You've got every option like that. And whenever you go through here, you've actually got options to put it into whatever off-road mode that you need. You've got low traction launch. You've got your four-wheel drive different modes here. Now this one did come with weight sensing as well. So whenever you're going through the water, you can click this feature and it will literally lift the vehicle to whatever height that needs to be at to keep you at the maximum water forwarding capabilities, which is crazy. I've never seen that in any other vehicle before. And it shows you everything that you'd possibly need to know. Now for the cameras on this thing, they are absolutely insane. Of course, you've got a full 360, but you've also got something a little different than a normal bird's eye view. You can go around to these different angles and it doesn't even matter if you're driving. It'll show you literally everything. And I think it is the craziest camera system I've ever seen in my entire life. You've even got a different selection for your off-road mode, which shows you the side profile of where you're at on both sides and directly in front of the vehicle, which is really cool. But for your on-road cameras, you have things just like this. So you can click which angle you wanna be at and it'll show it to you on the camera right there. So <laughs> I've never seen anything like this on any other vehicle, but I really, really like it on the Land Rover Defender. Now putting this vehicle on 35s in the two inch lift kit, it really hasn't negatively affected the performance or the drivability of this machine. It's still extremely usable. It did hurt the fuel economy. I'm only getting probably 13 miles a gallon. That's due in part to the way it's driven. But of course, anytime you lift up a vehicle, the fuel economy is gonna suffer. But with that being said, with the two inch lift rods, the intercooler relocation kit, the 35 1250s and the 30 millimeter spacers, it still drives really good. Now in terms of reliability and maintenance, I haven't had to do anything. I bought this vehicle pre-owned at 18,000 miles and now has 21,836 miles. So it's almost due for its first oil change since my ownership. But I do know the people that traded it in because they traded it at my dealership and they had no issues at all whatsoever. Now for me, if you guys remember, I did run into a couple little issues. It was mostly to do with the wind noise. So the A-pillar wind noise was extremely, extremely annoying. And I ended up coming up with my own fix. Now Land Rover does have their own bulletin laid out to make it extremely easy for you to bring it in and for a Land Rover technician to be able to fix it. But in terms of actual reliability or major mechanical failures or issues, I've had no issues at all and the previous owners of this vehicle had no issues at all either. With that being said, this is still a turbocharged, supercharged and hybrid powertrain. So I don't know if this is something I would wanna keep past the warranty and the warranty is actually coming up pretty quick. 
Now Land Rovers and Jaguars come with a four year 50,000 or maybe a five year 60,000. I honestly can't remember. Full bumper to bumper warranty, which is really nice. It came in handy on the two Jaguars I've had in the past. But with this, if something does mess up, it's gonna be pretty expensive. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video today is because I might be trading this extremely soon. Now, that's not due to any fault of the vehicle. It's simply because I don't know if this vehicle makes sense. Most of you guys already know I own a Rubicon 392 that is really cool, jacked up, it's super fast, and it's really capable off-road. So I already have a really capable off-road machine. This vehicle, once it's gone, would free up a lot of money to be able to use on different projects like the Rubicon 392. I just don't know if the Land Rover Defender makes enough sense to keep because in all honesty, it's not really getting used for what I would like to use it for. Now, like I've previously said, from top to bottom, I love pretty much every single thing about this vehicle aside from the color it may not be the best use of money and i would like to make some really cool content and i think freeing up some extra money would help us do that so for now i just want you guys to know that that is at least something that i am entertaining and i'm going to look around at some options see what i can figure out and see if it does make sense to go ahead and get rid of the land rover defender if you haven't already please like comment subscribe let me know what you think and let me know what you want to see next and until then godspeed